Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we touch the hem of your garment, the privileged anointing and favored open doors of your presence. May you breathe upon every spoken word. May you take over the entirety of this telecast through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Welcome. Let me just <clears throat> quickly refresh our memories and scale through the readings. But understand this, that in the last days, there will become times of stress, for men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, is obedient to the parents, ungrateful and holy, inhuman, implacable, slanderers, profligates, fierce, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, willing with conceit, lovers of pleasure and lovers of money, holding the form of religion but denying the power of it, avoid such people. Of those that people make their ways into household and capture weak women, burdened with sins and swayed by various impulses, who will listen to anybody and can never arrive at the knowledge of truth. As James, Janice, and Jampres opposed Moses, so these men also oppose the truth. Men of corrupt mind and counterfeit faith. But they will not get far, for their folly will be plain to all, <clears throat> as <clears throat> was that of those two men. Now you have observed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, what befell him, you know, at Iconium, Lystra, and persecution endured. Yet from all them all, the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live godly lives in Jesus Christ will be persecuted, while even men and impostors will go on from bad to worse. But as for you, continuing what you have learned and are firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. The word of the Lord, and thanks be to God. Facing the stressful upstream tides, of the last days. The key word there, apart from last day, is stress, which pressure of mental anguish caused by difficulties in life. Even the, even the two, three year old doesn't need to be taught what stress is about in our days. It is upstream when you're swimming against the tide that is nearer to the source of the, of the river. And when we're talking about tide, we are talking about rising and falling on the surface of the ocean. Turbulence, the king of things. Last days is all about end time. Has so many other names: end of days, last days, final days, doomsday, eschaton. That's where the have eschatology. These are features that describe various, several world religions and all things. So, since we are acquainted with all this. Let us start and be reminded that life is a journey of seasons. As you, as you think. Even in Egypt of Exodus chapter 1, there arose a time, a king that never knew himself. So we have seasons, we have journeys, we have rules, we have regimes. And the photograph would depict it all. They were, they, they were, they were victimized, taskmasters, beating them like, giving them bodies, beating them like slaves. And if you see this splash of photographs, they made their lives terrible. Their lives bitter with hard service, mortar and brick, and in all kind of work in the field. In all their work, they made them serve where they go. That is in Exodus. As much as life is a journey, it's also a journey of seasons. Have you seen that clock? Ecclesiastes says it in chapter three. For everything, there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And 
what we are talking about in the course of our spiritual navigation in this journey, we are talking about what are the things to be encountered. Understand this, very lost times. Those are expectations, very lost times. They will come. And with the world now in global village, you hear them by the minutes. Most life, wars, rumors of wars. So this very lost times, they are talking about danger, risk, hazards, unsafe, vulnerable, uncertain, insecure times, critical, desperate, exposed, too many vocabularies, at risk in jeopardy, in danger. Those are the things. You see, the news we have now, they are not good news, they are bad news. Once they say the news is a matter of what has happened in the last I opened the television. And these are times where we are, these are tides of demonic origin. It will have been okay, it will have been more comfortable if it didn't have the supernatural thing. The, 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 you know, the, the brick red color is warning. The spirit explicitly says that in latter times, some will fall away from the faith and pay attention to deceitful spirits, demonic doctrines. Those are the things that have compounded the issues, demonic. And like it was, you know, in the in Pharaoh's palace, you can see it, it, verse 36 says, they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap for they are being held captive by him to do whatever they want. So don't think you are so smart. A lot of people in churches have been held captive by the devil without knowing they're working for him. Some people will come to service. It is during the service, they will go and do their, their most recent head ties. Some will be shining their, as if they are coming to a fashion parade. They have already been in the devil's net without knowing. And these are times to be identified. It says be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Don't waste that grace. We, we are talking about ties of this demonic wave. They are right, we are right there. We are neck deep in the middle of these times. And these are times to be spirit identified. Don't think you don't think you are intelligent, don't worry, I can manage. Jesus Christ told them while introducing the Holy Spirit. When he comes, you can see right decision, wrong decision. You can see the crossroad. When he, when, he, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you to all. You need the Holy Spirit. You need spirit guided decisions to make. Common sense will not work. There are the times to be identified and the Bible says expressly, you better know it's coming. And this was written over 2000 years ago. Now, when we're talking about demonic influence, the demonic influence is so deceitful, the devil walks on the flesh. The flesh will quickly shorten lifespan. That's the assignment of the devil. You don't, don't think there will be a thunder and one monster will appear and start chasing. No, no, the many of them are even pretty. They only walk to walk to shorten your lifetime. Like 10, 10, John 10, 10 says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. They will work on what will shorten life span. And in contrast, Jesus Christ said, I came that didn't have life and we have it abundantly. I was just looking at the news. Cancer has increased by hundreds of thousands of cases, and people are dying, and there are some known causes. The devil will only assist you to program short lifespan. You know, first do first John 2 6 says. He who says he remains in him ought himself also to walk just like he walked. The devil will encourage you to walk unlike Jesus Christ walked, and he will walk on your flesh to make your own programs shorter. He will do this, people will focus on money. A lot of young men are dying now looking for money. But they make the money, they don't live to, they don't live to enjoy it. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. They want to talk about their bills. That's in the Western world. They are running to make the ends meet. They will be lovers of money. It will make them, you know, it's just first Timothy 6 9. People who want to get rich, people who want to get rich will fall into 
temptation traps into many foolish, harmful desires that plunge men, politicians, a lot of people will be, even, even the scheme, how the, how the church businesses will come and make and give them rich and some income. They will be lovers of money at all levels. Even clergy can almost go, to, go on strike because of stipend and salaries. They will do anything. People will love us of money. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. It is so it's up there. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. That's what it dollars, pounds, sterling, they are looking for it as if their life was embedded in it. What else would the devil do? He will enhance people to be rude to higher authorities. He only sets you on higher authorities for self-destruction. People will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. Forget about parents. Anybody who is if you don't, if you don't like a, an African idea, you say you better know the weight of yourself before you talk anyhow to these young ones. They will give you a dress down, even by costly look. You will not want to say any other thing again. And when they are being disobedient to their parents, see that blue and the white. What? That is a short blue. The devil will not go and smack him on the head. He will make him do what will not make him live longer. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land that Lord God is giving you. God is not going to swallow that. So, young, you know, we, we, are, we have a profile of serial young people dying, it's from this. You know, the scriptures, they are self assertive, they are self, you know, operative. This rudeness to their parents can even, you know, to not to now tell you that. No fly can draw from the sky without God knowing about it. In the discussion between Job and God, see what he said. Job chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for naught? Have you not made an edge about him? In other words, I can touch him. So when you are disobedient to parents, when you are disobedient to higher authorities, you are, you are almost automatically removing the edge around you. The devil cannot strike you without a The accuser will look for a reason. He will lure you like somebody was taken to hell one day and saw the demons of praise. I was like, that's bad, he said. The devil told him, it's your duty to tempt them on earth, to lure them. It's your duty to, you know, to, to, to torment them in hell. <clears throat> when, you are, when you are breaking God's laws, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8 says, he that diggeth the pits shall fall into it. And also breaketh an edge, a serpent shall fall. When you go beyond the edge, you are exposed to the serpent by the serpent's by. That's what demons do to achieve rudeness through eye for eye, you know. When you are not talking about ungodliness, there is a splash of vocabularies that talk about ungodliness in chapter three, from verse two. Lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, unholy, ungrateful, heartless. On a peaceable, they, 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 they are, their heart is as hard as stone. Whatever they want to do, they will do. Strangers without self control. So, all this ungodliness, they have a network of the rainbow. Their own rainbow is more, has more than seven colors. That's what demons do. That's what demons do. This is the way they achieve it. And <clears throat> that was the making of King Herod. Herod was also godly. He made himself like a god. And it was struck down by an angel. He said his voice was no longer the voice of a human being, because, and he was eaten by worms. Demons pr program this, you will not even see their hand blocking. And these things, when you will not follow peace, where your heart is hurt, when you will not follow holiness, God will see you afar off if ever you ever get his presence. Is a follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man. In other words, God is not going to swallow. It doesn't matter what title you bear. No man will see the Lord. You'll be hearing that he was somewhere, somewhere. How else do the demons do this in the perilous times? They, 
they push you to key into elective ignorance. That's from verse three and four. The time has arrived where people no longer will tolerate sound doctrine. They don't want to hear it. If many of them cross the road with blood to their ears, not even hearing the coming vehicle. They only want to hear what they want to hear. And elective ignorance, elective or incidental or coincidental ignorance will last, last during the same dustbin. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So somebody said, if you are tired of Bible study, if you are tired of knowledge, key into ignorance. You don't need to look for the devil's hard work. You are already in his next. So people of God are even destroyed by ignorance. How else would the demons do this? They achieve this terrible, this terrible war on Christians through conceit. Conceit is too high opinion of one's ability. See the way that one is talking to somebody. <clears throat> See the way that one is talking to somebody. <clears throat> and you know, the rich fool can as well be a Christian. There are many people who plan, who spend all their lives planning for how they will now one day just stretch their legs and not and not and not walk and eat. That's planning for death. You can see the rich, rich fool is examining the estates on the left, he is talking the bags of money. And God said, tonight you, your life will be. If you don't exercise, you develop heart conditions and die. So God made us to walk and to walk for his purpose. But the demons will persuade you, don't worry, it is your time, it is time for you to enjoy now. And part of the focus of this deceit is lukewarmness. You are neither here nor there. And the Bible says, according to the quotation that Jesus Christ has interpreted the Laodicean lifestyle, you say, I'm rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not knowing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. Wretchedness is all about self-love. When you love yourself so much, you're already wretched. When you are, in, when you are miserable and naked, you have gone to self-deceit. Self-deceit is all about, you know, you don't even know you are naked. Self-justification will, will feature the blind man and the poor man. Those are, you can see in the spiritual, you are, you are, you are, you are depicted as horrible beggar by the roadside, although you may be living in mansion here on earth. Now, these are people who are the power that the way the Bible talks about them, they have the form of godliness, but they deny the power of it. And it's self from such people get away. There are people who can quote scriptures, but they, they don't live scriptures. There are people who can teach scriptures, they even deny the effect of what scriptures can be. Those are those are times of it in which we are. And this demonic influence continuing. I started <clears throat> giving <clears throat> examples. Among them are those who make their way to household and capture weak women. They can overanalyze your sinful nature that you will not think you can ever make it. They go from house to house. They have their teaching. They capture women who, are, who, who will never forget their past, who are led by various impulses. You see, if, if demonic harassment will not do it, they will do it in a very apparent spiritual way and give you a doctrine that will last you a long, a long time. You can see this lady now, you have a facial posture stage it all. They would listen to anybody, but you can never arrive at the knowledge of truth. They are wondering, they don't understand again. They're always learning, but they cannot grasp what the truth is. You need the Holy Spirit to tell, to make you so. The demonic influence, some of them even act through denominational doctrines. Some people, when they have said once, they forbid people to marry, they order men to abstain from certain food which God created, and they will, they will have a program that looks ridiculous and embarrassing to biblical godliness. Counterfeits, spiritual counterfeiting is another one that devil uses. James, Genesis, uh, who opposed Moses. You know, the competitive miracle 
in Egyptian palace featured magicians. There are people who can show you supernatural. I will not call it, you know, theo, theophany. Theophany is, an, is a manifestation of God, but they are only for the devil. They can give you, put down some the snake or rice. There are people like that who are into spiritual counterfeiting. In Acts, you will find that the spirit girl, the, spirit, the, the slave girl, many of these type of people are even the prophetesses in some churches. They will tell you, these are the men, servants of the most high who proclaim to you the way of our salvation. 100% true, but it's the devil talking. And by the time you get the Lord, you are sucked into demonic influence. Many of them are the prophetesses, ruining on the floor wipe of a sign sometimes. What again, in this spiritual counterfeiting, the Bible school in Colossians says, beware. Take care, let's you, let there be some of you, you know, there is someone who leads you away as prisoners by means of philosophy. Some can give you very intelligent, sound, PhD compliant philosophy of the Bible. Hydro fantasies, human traditions. You know, they can say, of course, you don't, don't, don't forget your custom, don't forget your tradition. You leave your tummy open, you advertise to the world. They are there. The devil can, you know, he is like jack of all trades, master of evil. And the Bible says, as I now come to Egypt, indeed, it may shock you, but it is true. All, did you say some? All who desire to live godly life in Christ, Jesus, will suffer persecution, no matter how intelligent, no matter how wonderful, you know, how, how wonderful your personal relationship could be. Once you decide for Christ, expects it. So in these pleasant experiences of the godly, David expressed this groaning in Psalm 73. He said, as it was as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold for envy the arrogance when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. The world-class billionaires today, I couldn't tell you what good percentage Christians have in their means. Bad people have the money. And Jesus Christ has warned us. I've told you this so that in me you may have peace. You will have trouble in the world, but never lose heart. I have conquered the world. Jesus had conquered the world. These are times of field day of evil. People without natural affection, truth breaking, false accusers, incontinent. I'm not saying they are irritating, they are, they are just, they don't, they don't have any bridle in the way they talk. Fierce, despisers of those that are good. They will run you down. You don't need to have known them. You, sometimes you come from here, you go to Western Germany, what have I done? You live there, you come to London, what have I done? You go to Russia. It's as if the devil are so mad. You don't need, you cannot hide because we bear the clearing light of Christ when we belong to him. It's an evil day time. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Sometimes people, terrible people, by the time they laugh, they deceive you and laugh to themselves, they even believe that's the best way of life. And David continues on 73. These bad men, they have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from the bodies common to man. They are not plagued by human ills. They can have breakfast in Lagos, lunch in London, and have supper in New York. They have all that they need. And you wonder, is it seen to be a Christian? Now let us talk about diagnosis. Unless you know how to recognize these times, you can be sucked in by deceit. The Bible says, know this, this you must know. In other words, you must recognize it. Recognition is the, is the first step of facing it. You must be able to identify it. And this recognition is talking about who they are. They will not go further 
I don't want to mention names, but when you see profile of terrible people, after they die, it's as if they never existed. Their folly will be obvious to all. Also as journeys and generous, when you see false prophets, they have their seasons. Some people, if they even say they are Jesus, they will sleep with, my, with the daughters and the mothers and do all sorts of things. And the, when they are raining, you wonder the whole ground will be shaking. You will see the outcome. Even the Bible says, see the, you know, obey your leaders, but see the outcome of their lives and imitate them their, their faith. You can be so confused there in the churches. The first step is to recognize them. And first of the reasons of the five, verse 21 says, test all things. Hold fast to what is good. You examine everything. You hold fast to what is good. That's the way to recognize them. You even test God. Now. And you can see that magnifying lens. Don't believe every spirit. He says, but test the spirit. God has allowed you to test him. Even when prophecy came to Gideon, we say, God, don't be annoyed. Let this be water. So let test the spirit. God will not be annoyed because there are, there are, there are so many counterfeits. And one of the one of the diagnostic profile of them, they have a form of godliness while they die in the bodies. They can pray time times in the public and put sign of the cross on their food. By the time they are taking some decisions, the decision will be will be contradictory to depending on this power of God that this man is advertising. Avoidance of evil. The second step, you need to avoid evil. And these people are, you can see, this is the body of a sheep, but this is a wolf. And many of them are pastors. Many of them are custodians of your children's, you know, destiny in spiritual matters. Beware of false prophets. They are in the false forces are not the people living in the market, they're in the churches. Some of them are even doing very well. False prophets will come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are having wolves. Some of them are the visioners. They, you, you know, you can see vision with witchcraft. You can see vision with abundant spirit. You can see vision with, you know, what they, what they, what they call all sorts of demonic materials with stargazing, all sorts of things. They have the very, very cool on the stop. Some, some of them you cannot even provoke, but they are, they are wolves. Now, you need the, the steps are to avoid evil. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, the Bible says, but only those who do the will of my Father. So see what they are doing and acknowledge that they belong to God or to the devil. Prophetesses snatch. Husbands, see what they do. But one of your one of our areas of avoiding or facing this tide, even to start from ourselves, self-audits, Romans 2:21. You then who teach others, do you teach yourself? Why you preach against stealing? Do you steal? There are many ways of stealing. You, you, you can rob. A, a body of a body builder by making them suggest that they will underwrite all you need to do, and it's not in the law. The next step is mentoring. Paul said, continue in the things you have learned and become convinced. The Americans say, observe one, assist one, do one. There are areas you need to see how it is done with men of God. Find out, I remember when I became a bishop, I definitely, you know, even without invitation, I went to see how people I respect. One of them was a retired primate. I went to Abuja to see how he does the synod, how he constructs it, you know, how he, how, how he constructed his synod. You, know, you see people who you think are trustworthy, you go and see mentoring. Following good examples, you can see this way this gentleman is looking up. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of the faith. That's Hebrews 12 too. Look unto Jesus. That's the way to face the tide. And thorough systematic Bible study, which is the testimony of this young man called Timothy. From infancy, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith. Start with your children. 
during COVID, I remember during the long time COVID, a lot of the grandchildren who were around us memorized Psalm 91 and they are four or five. You can, when you teach them, their brain are very receptive. And thorough systematic Bible study, study yourself until you are proved to show that you're a workman who does not need to be ashamed rightly. It's one thing to know scriptures, it's another thing to rightly, you know, bring it in practice. And when we are talking about facing the tides of stress, end time stress, we are talking about all scripture, not some scripture. That's the way this chapter three of Second Timothy ends. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. It's all scripture. Don't say I don't like this sound, so it's out of my, it's out of my radio. All scripture. <clears throat> and the next thing is this combat readiness. Put on the whole armor of God. <clears throat> that's it. That, that, that's a sermon of his own. The whole armor of God. Your thoughts, your heart, your gadgets, where you go, your faith, the sword of the spirit. When the Bible says oh, these words are not the part of your mouth, it's part of the, the word I've spoken to you. The whole armor of God, we've talked about it so many times. Now facing the stress, we have done diagnosis, we have done mentoring. How do you now face and end on the tides? You cannot afford to be lukewarm. Revelation 3.16. Look home no more. Because you are look home, don't cheat yourself on earth and end in hell. 50-50 with the devil and God, they will not land you anywhere except on the devil's territory. No more look homeness. Don't go into self-deceit. And the Bible says, be strong, stand firm. Hebrews 30, 10, 38, 39 says, but my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back my heart, who have no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. So you now face, I read from one book, I said it's a rejoiner. <clears throat> he said, when you face the devil, is when the devil will see the lion of Judah in you. When you, you know, he said, be strong and face it, and uh, be strong in faith to defeat the, the devil. Anyone? Luke 21, 36, Jesus Christ talked about this stressful time of end time. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before them. In other words, be strong. Praying. You will pray. You will be strong. You will be, you will be, you will be obeying what the Bible says. You will be courageous. When it says be courageous, be strong, they're, 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 they're very, very complimentary. Now, how then can I say there are so many words that are actionable? You can see the actionable words, which I deliberately did not put any quotation, which is your own homework. Such the scriptures, watch at all times, praying. And what is it? Watch, deliberately analyze what is happening, avoid them, flee fornication, don't look back, flee for your lives. That is a lot. Let the, let, the lead, let the reader understand. In other words, Gabriel, make this one understand. That's what in, that's there, Daniel. Do not depart from the temple fasting and praying. That is one Anna and Simeon when Jesus Christ came. Resist the devil. Be very courageous. Do not forsake the assembly of yourselves. Pray for one another. Wait upon the Lord. Run with Baphelian. The reason I said before you. The last two, I put the quotations. Good. <clears throat> verse 21, 22, 22, keep yourself <clears throat> in the love of God as you await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you eternal life. And indeed, have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. And to steal others, show mercy, tempered with fear, hating even the clothing stained by the flesh. You can see from Genesis to Revelation, he's talking about the urgency of time. Don't look back, flee. And just Christ said in Revelation, he was an heir, letting hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To whom overcomes, I will grant to eat of the 
tree of life, which is in the paradise of God.